Hi guys and welcome to the Eho Home. This is our first video. Um, so we're basically trying to improve our home. So this account is literally going to be all about home decor, DIY, things that we do to try and improve our home on a budget. Um, so yeah, stay tuned. This is the first video. This first video is all about our wall panelling, which you can kind of just about see just behind me. Um, we decided to do it as a feature wall in our living room. That was my little girl in the background. And yeah, like um, it came up really, really well. And we thought we'd put this detailed video together just so that people know exactly what to do. Um, we had to get quite a few different videos together in order for us to know exactly what we wanted to do. So we thought we would do our version and our take of it and do it so that we can help the millions of people hopefully that watch this and do mold it, moldings or add moldings to their walls in their house. So with that said, make sure you follow our Instagram page at the dot eo.home and stay tuned. So we have finally finished all the painting. I finished it off. If you watch my um, Insta story account, you'll see that I finished everything myself, which is amazing with the help of my uncle at first. But it's all done and I'm so happy like I'm really really happy so yeah so I just thought I would show and insert all the things that we did prior to actually putting the molding on the wall just to show you what our lessons learned were, were. I personally would not do this step again where I would paint the moldings before they go onto the wall I would wait and leave this as the last step I found that when we were cutting some of the wood some of the paint started to chip and also it's easier to get a really good even coat when it's just on the wall rather than on the floor there were some little bits that I missed off so I would recommend that everyone just does this step right at the end once they're actually on the wall and it's just a lot more easier to do and um, rather than doing this step, it just took so long, slowed down the process and yeah. But I thought I'd still include this because it's lessons learned, right? And we are learning and I know what to do next time when I do this elsewhere in my house. of the moulding so literally all of the all of them have been like primed and varnished and now all I need to do is paint them with emulsion I think I'm just going to do like two coats and that should be more than enough and then finally get them on the wall so as you can see I'm now using the same paint that I use on my walls because as I whitewashed them before I started this process um, I do think it's imperative that you use the same paint um, for both your walls and um, the molding as well um, but again you can do this all at the end and this was just a really wasted step um, I really so I have seen other people do this step before but I just think it was a real waste of time and I ended up having to repaint everything anyway so um, yeah I would not recommend doing this as you can see in the background my daughter and my mum were just having a, a, a look at what I was doing um, it's a really nice day outside but um, yeah please don't do this step it's a waste of time guys <laughs> So now we're going to go on to what you need to do. So this bit is absolutely imperative. So the first thing that you need to do is make sure that you've measured out your wall. Now I did this before because I needed to work out how much of the um, panelling or moulding um, I needed to buy. So the first thing you need to do is, and don't watch my nails, I'm not getting them done until I've done this whole process. <laughs> but first thing you need to do is make sure that you... Um, measure along the largest part of your wall so horizontally throughout the whole wall my one is 417 centimeters across and then the length of the wall is 220 
So then what you need to do is work out your biggest space. And it's always good to work out the biggest space first and then you see what space you're left off with. So we've got a TV. So I've also put the dimensions here of our TV. And the TV um, is uh, 110 centimeters by 63. So we actually wanna hang the TV onto the wall. So we wanna make sure that we wanted to make sure, and one of the key things was making sure that this fitted into, the TV fitted into this unit space. Um, next thing is, we wanted to kind of do quite a long length, so you can do the measurements as you want, but we wanted it to look longer, because with new built houses, the ceilings are nowhere near as tall, or as long, or as high as um, Victorian um, houses, which if you see this in a Victorian house, it will probably be like nearly like a third more of the height. And then, you know, you just literally work away. So you just need to use a little bit of maths and subtract away. So 150, take away that from um, 417 and then work your way across on how much the other panels will be equally. And then you also need to do the same for the size. The size were a lot easier. Again, make sure that you do not include your skirting board in the mesh. So now we've got that all done, now is to actually transfer everything onto the wall. So transferring all of the measurements onto your wall is a really good step that I would recommend everyone does. It really helps guide you when you actually come to sticking all of your mouldings onto the wall. So make sure you do this step and make sure you always have your spirit level checking all of the me measurements over. Right, so what you need to get is your mouldings, your mitra box and saw, your spirit level and a measuring tape and a pencil. Now, once you have all of these items, you can start. So you want to start by putting your measurements onto the actual moulding so you can now cut the right length that needs to go on the wall. And make sure you use a pencil. I, we always use the pencil and we always, also marked it on the rear side of the moulding, not the side that it's actually going to be showing. So now we need to cut it and we're using the saw and the mitra box. Ours we bought from Aldi, it was literally a fiver, but you can get them very cheaply elsewhere. And you just want to be cutting each corner um, at a backslash angle and also a forward slash angle if that makes sense. So it can all fit into a box shape. You also want to just double check the measurement once you've actually cut just to make sure it's definitely the right length. Now here's just an example of how it looks when you've got like one box cut out and laid out. We use wood glue but there is another method that I would recommend using and that is Gorilla Tape. Absolutely better, easier and cleaner to work with. I'm using a really old knife because we smeared way too much glue on the wood and we didn't want to have all of that transfer onto the wall, which it did anyway, but either way, we you know we tried to get rid of as much as possible. Um, you really want to have two people at this point just to really make sure that you've got one that it's, you know, I'm using the spirit level here just to check that we're all, you know, right. This is the first one that we had done and we just wanted to make sure it was absolutely right before we you know, pushed it onto the wall and it actually stuck down. And here we're literally just you know repeating the process and once you've done the first box it all gets very very easier or a lot easier you know what you're doing um i think the first box took us like over an hour to do i don't know why it took so long but after that we were able to just get everything completely done um so so quickly so you know it you can definitely do all of this in a day um in terms of cutting out the moldings and actually pinning them onto the wall
as you can see, my husband was absolutely gassed and happy with our progress that day. <laughs> As you can see here, um, one of the mouldings is in its original colour and that is because we cut some of them a little bit wrong and we had to use a spare one that I literally had lying around um, that hadn't been painted. So really be careful with your measurements and cutting. So now once all the moulding is on the wall, you want to now use some caulk and you want to get a caulk gun as well. Um, and you're basically just going to use this to fill in any of the gaps at the side and it just gives off a nice finished look. Um, I think this was a really good way of, you know, just sealing all those gaps that naturally can happen. And what you need to get, I don't know exactly what this is called, but um, I'm going to probably link it down below where you can get it. But this is basically used to like smooth down and take out excess caulk. And it basically helps to like fill in the gaps. Another tip as well is to get a, a damp cloth, as you can see there, and just run it down the sides where you've applied the caulk. And again, that takes off excess and just gives a nice, nice finished look. And another tip as well is to get the excess calc that you've got there and just use it to fill in any gaps that you'll see on the actual surface of the box that you've created and stuck onto your wall. And that's it. All finished, all done. Really easy. I just went over with white paint, really took my time, went over the moulding one more time and the wall. And yeah, it just looks absolutely amazing. I absolutely love it as a feature wall in our room. And yeah, I hope this has been good. Please subscribe and follow us on Instagram. Bye.